In mathematics, an algebra over a field is a vector space equipped with a bilinear product. Thus, an algebra over a field is a set, together with operations of multiplication, addition, and scalar multiplication by elements of the underlying field that satisfy the axioms implied by vector space and bilinear. Given an integer n, the ring of real square matrices of order n is an example of an associative algebra over the field of real numbers under matrix addition and matrix multiplication. Euclidean space with multiplication given by the vector cross product is an example of a non-associative algebra over the field of real numbers. An algebra is unital or unitary if it has an identity element with respect to the multiplication. The ring of real square matrices of order n forms a unital algebra since the identity matrix of order n is the identity element with respect to matrix multiplication. It is an example of a unital associative algebra, a ring that is also a vector space. Many authors use the term algebra to mean associative algebra, or unital associative algebra, or in some subjects such as algebraic geometry, unital associative commutative algebra. Replacing the field of scalars by a commutative ring leads to the more general notion of an algebra over a ring. Algebras are not to be confused with vector spaces equipped with a bilinear form, like inner product spaces. Definition and motivation. First example. The complex numbers. Any complex number may be written a plus by where a and b are real numbers and i is the imaginary unit. In other words, a complex number is represented by the vector over the field of real numbers. So the complex numbers form a two-dimensional real vector space, where addition is given by plus equals and scalar multiplication is given by c equals where all of A, B, C and D are real numbers. We use the symbol to multiply two vectors together, which we use complex multiplication to define. Equals. The following statements are basic properties of the complex numbers. Let x, y, z be complex numbers, and let a, b be real numbers. Z equals plus. In other words, multiplying a complex number by the sum of two other complex numbers is the same as multiplying by each number in the sum, and then adding equals. This shows that complex multiplication is compatible with the scalar multiplication by the real numbers. This example fits into the following definition by taking the field k to be the real numbers, and the vector space a to be the complex numbers. Definition Let k be a field, and let a be a vector space over k equipped with an additional binary operation from a times a to a, denoted hereby. Then a is an algebra over k if the following identities hold for any three elements x, y, and z of a, and all elements are in b of k. Right distributivity z equals x z plus y z. Left distributivity x equals x y plus x z. Compatibility with scalars equals these three axioms are another way of saying that the binary operation is bilinear. An algebra over K is sometimes also called a K algebra, and K is called the base field of A. The binary operation is often referred to as multiplication in A. The convention adopted in this article is that multiplication of elements of an algebra is not necessarily associative, although some authors use the term algebra to refer to an associative algebra. Notice that when a binary operation on a vector space is commutative, as in the above example of the complex numbers, it is left distributive exactly when it is right distributive. But in general, for non-commutative operations, they are not equivalent and therefore require separate axioms. A motivating example, quaternions the real numbers may be viewed as a one-dimensional vector space with a compatible multiplication and hence a one-dimensional algebra over itself. Likewise, as we saw above, the complex numbers form a two-dimensional vector space over the field of real numbers, and hence form a two-dimensional algebra over the rails. In both these examples, every non-zero vector has an inverse, making them both division algebras. 
although there are no division algebras in three dimensions, in 1843, the Quaternions were defined and provided the now famous four-dimensional example of an algebra over the real numbers, where one can not only multiply vectors, but also divide. Any quaternion may be written as equals a plus by plus cj plus dk. Unlike the complex numbers, the quaternions are an example of a non-commutative algebra. For instance, equals that equals. The quaternions were soon followed by several other hypercomplex number systems, which were the early examples of algebras over a field. Another motivating example, the cross-product previous examples are associative algebras. An example of a non-associative algebra is a three-dimensional vector space equipped with the cross-product. This is a simple example of a class of non-associative algebras, which is widely used in mathematics and physics. The Lie Algebras Basic Concepts Algebra homomorphisms given K algebras A and B. A K algebra homomorphism is a K linear map F, a B such that F equals F F for all X, Y and A. The space of all K algebra homomorphisms between A and B is frequently written as a K algebra isomorphism is a bijective K algebra morphism. For all practical purposes, isomorphic algebras differ only by notation. Subalgebras and ideals A subalgebra of an algebra over a field K is a linear subspace that has the property that the product of any two of its elements is again in the subspace. In other words, a subalgebra of an algebra is a subset of elements that is closed under addition, multiplication, and scalar multiplication. In symbols, we say that a subset L of a k algebra A is a subalgebra if for every x, y and L and c in k, we have that x, y, x plus y, and c, x are all in L. A left ideal of a k algebra is a linear subspace that has the property that any element of the subspace space multiplied on the left by any element of the algebra produces an element of the subspace. In symbols, we say that a subset L of a k algebra A is a left ideal if for every x and y in L, z in A and c in k. We have the following three statements. 1. x plus y is in L. 2. cx is in L. 3. zx is in L. If we're replaced with xz is in L, then this would define a right ideal. A two-sided ideal is a subset that is both a left and a right ideal. The term ideal on its own is usually taken to mean a two-sided ideal. Of course when the algebra is commutative, then all of these notions of ideal are equivalent. Notice that conditions and together are equivalent to L being a linear subspace of A. It follows from condition that every left or right ideal is a subalgebra. It is important to notice that this definition is different from the definition of an ideal of a ring, in that here we require the condition. Of course if the algebra is unital, then condition implies condition. Extension of scalars if we have a field extension F, K, which is to say a bigger field field F that contains K, then there is a natural way to construct an algebra over F from any algebra over K. It is the same construction one uses to make a vector space over a bigger field, namely the tensor product. So if A is an algebra over K, then is an algebra over F. Kinds of algebras and examples. Algebras over fields come in many different types. These types are specified by insisting on some further axioms, such as commutativity or associativity of the multiplication operation, which are not required in the broad definition of an algebra. The theories corresponding to the different types of algebras are often very different. Unital algebra An algebra is unital or unitary if it has a unit or identity element i with x equals x equals she for all x in the algebra. Zero algebra An algebra is called zero algebra if uv equals zero for all u, v in the algebra, not to be confused with the algebra with one element. 
It is inherently non-unital, associative and commutative. One may define a unital zero algebra by taking the direct sum of modules of a field K and a K vector space V, and defining the product of every pair of elements of V to be zero. That is, if lambda mu K and mu V V then equals lambda mu plus, if E1. An example of unital zero algebra is the algebra of dual numbers. The unital zero R algebra built from a one-dimensional real vector space. These unital zero algebras may be more generally useful, as they allow to translate in any general property of the algebras to properties of vector spaces or modules. For example, the theory of Grobner bases was introduced by Bruno Buckberger for ideals in a polynomial ring R equals k x1 xn over a field. The construction of the unital zero algebra over a free R module allows to extend directly this theory as a Grobner basis theory for submodules of a free module. This extension allows for computing a Grobner basis of a submodule to use without any modification. Any algorithm and any software for computing Grobner basis of ideals associative algebra the algebra of all n by n matrices over the field k here the multiplication is ordinary matrix multiplication group algebras where a group serves as a basis of the vector space and algebra multiplication extends group multiplication the commutative algebra k x of all polynomials over k algebras of functions such as the r algebra of all real valued continuous functions defined on the interval 0 1 or the c algebra of all holomorphic functions defined on some fixed open set in the complex plane these are also commutative incidence algebras are built on certain partially ordered sets algebras of linear operators for example on a hilbert space here the algebra multiplication is given by the composition of operators these algebras also carry a topology many of them are defined on an underlying banach space which turns them into banach algebras if an involution is given as well we obtain b asterisk algebras and c asterisk algebras these are studied in functional analysis Non-associative algebra A non-associative algebra over a field K is a k-vector space A equipped with a k by linear map. The usage of non-associative here is meant to convey that associativity is not assumed, but it does not mean it is prohibited. That is, it means not necessarily associative, just as non-commutative means not necessarily commutative. Examples detailed in the main article include Octonians, Lie algebras, Jordan algebras, alternative algebras, flexible algebras, power associative algebras, algebras and rings. The definition of an associative k-algebra with unit is also frequently given in an alternative way. In this case, an algebra over a field k is a ring A together with a ring homomorphism where Z is the center of A. Since A is a ring morphism, then one must have either that A is the zero ring or that A is injective. This definition is equivalent to that above, with scalar multiplication given by given two such associative unital K algebras A and B. A unital K algebra morphism F. A B is a ring morphism that commutes with the scalar multiplication defined by eta, which one may write as for all in. In other words, the following diagram commutes. Structure coefficients. For algebras over a field, a bilinear multiplication from A times A to A is completely determined by the multiplication of basis elements of A. Conversely, once a basis for A has been chosen, the products of basis elements can be set arbitrarily, and then extended in a unique way to a bilinear operator on A, i.e., so the resulting multiplication satisfies the algebra laws. Thus, given the field K, any finite-dimensional algebra can be specified up to isomorphism by giving its dimension, and specifying n3 structure coefficients C, R, J, K, which are scalars. 
These structure coefficients determine the multiplication in A via the following rule, where E1 and form a basis of A. Note however that several different sets of structure coefficients can give rise to isomorphic algebras. When the algebra can be endowed with a metric, then the structure coefficients are written with upper and lower indices so as to distinguish their transformation properties under coordinate transformations. Specifically, lower indices are covariant indices and transform via pullbacks, while upper indices are contravariant, transforming under pushforwards. Thus, in mathematical physics, the structure coefficients are often written ci, j, k, and the defining rule is written using the Einstein notation as e i e j equals ci, j, k, e, k. If you apply this to vectors written in index notation, then this becomes k equals ci, j, k, x, i, y, j. If k is only a commutative ring and not a field, then the same process works if a is a free module over k. If it isn't, then the multiplication is still completely determined by its action on a set that spans a. However, the structure constants can't be specified arbitrarily in this case. And knowing only the structure constants does not specify the algebra up to isomorphism. Classification of low-dimensional algebras two-dimensional, three-dimensional and four-dimensional unit are associative algebras over the field of complex numbers were completely classified up to isomorphism by Edward study. There exist two two-dimensional algebras. Each algebra consists of linear combinations of two basis elements, one in A. According to the definition of an identity element, it remains to specify for the first algebra. For the second algebra, there exist five three-dimensional algebras. Each algebra consists of linear combinations of three basis elements, one, A and B. Taking into account the definition of an identity element, it is sufficient to specify for the first algebra, for the second algebra, for the third algebra, for the fourth algebra, for the fifth algebra. The fourth algebra is non-commutative, others are commutative. Generalization Algebra over a ring In some areas of mathematics, such as commutative algebra, it is common to consider the more general concept of an algebra over a ring, where a commutative unital ring R replaces the field K. The only part of the definition that changes is that A is assumed to be an R module. Associative algebras over rings A unital ring A is always an associative algebra over its center. The center of that ring is, and hence it has the structure of an algebra over a ring which is not a field. Note that the split Bicquaternion algebra is also naturally an eight-dimensional algebra. In commutative algebra, if A is a unital ring, then any unital ring homomorphism defines an R-module structure on A, and this is what is known as the R-algebra structure.